I will never forget Dick's laugh. It had a richness and a depth and a sincerity that came from the bottom of his soul that just made you feel happy. You couldn't not laugh with him or feel the warmth that comes off of him. He was a beautiful man, and he left a lasting impression on me. And when I close my eyes, I can hear his laughter, and I always will. And I will always love him. Hi, Cindy. It's Matt Shale. My condolences on Richard's passing. Hi, Steve. Hi, Bonnie. And everyone else there in Cripple Creek. Um, everybody knows what a, a good and fine man Dick was. So personable. So easy to get along with. Cindy, you and Richard were gracious hosts every time I visited um, your home in Florida and in Manhattan and your beautiful house in, in the mountains in Cripple Creek. Um, 1989 we were we were putting up After Dark, and this was my first professional theater job, and Dick was my first professional theater director. And you have to understand, I was in the middle of, between my second and third year in acting grad school, so I was up to here in uh, technique and, and theory and, uh, and habits and all sorts of things were going on with my uh, education. So when I came out to, uh, to do the play, um, I was stopping rehearsal every two seconds and asking Dick, like, Dick, I don't understand. What's my motivation here? Uh, why does George Medhurst uh, say this? And why does George Medhurst do this? And I, I don't understand. And he would just look at me. Dick would just kind of like, you know, you know, we only have ten days to mount this. You know that, right, Matt? <laughs> um, uh, figure out a reason why he he's motivated to say this and. Uh, and when you do it, make sure you pose like this, and make sure you pose like this, and out to the audience like this. And trust me, it'll be fine. So I, you know, I went backstage, I uh, banged my head against the wall a couple of times, and, uh, and I came back out, and um, I did it the way Dick wanted me to do it, and I trusted the process. And you know what, it was a lot like Shakespeare, and Dick said that. He said it's, it's speeches, it's like Shakespearean acting. Victorian, classic Victorian melodrama. It's just like directing Shakespeare in, in, the, in that time. And uh, you know what? He was right. I trusted the process. I, I learned why I said my lines within the line, just like Shakespeare. And, um, and we put up a great show. And... Uh, Dick directed a great show, and um, Locals Night came, and couldn't be more it couldn't be more terrifying than Locals Night. Three hundred people packed into the theater, and uh, they had a great time. I remember that was one of the most exciting times I'd ever had on stage, and um, and we were sold out all summer long, and um, it was a wonderful experience. And I was glad I got to work with Dick again in uh, 1991 when we did Flying Scud. So I got the good glassware, the Imperial Hotel glassware, and salut to Richard Rizome. Bye. Dick Rizome was, was an amazing, was an amazing man and uh, just a an awesome director who who instilled in everyone who worked with him um, confidence, even when you when you lacked it in yourself, and made you believe in yourself, and and let you know that you could do things that 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 you had doubted yourself on. Um, he was uh, a man who pushed you to the to the edge, and and made you. Uh, I can remember when we, when we were doing stuff, he would. 
you know, I, I came into the Imperial program um, being an actor who had done all very internalized stuff and, and smaller stuff, but, but he pushed you physically and made you uh, believe and, and, and create characters that were larger than life, and and that carried in into to our lives as, as individuals and, and artists. And the the other thing that I, I one of the many things that I took away from from working with the Dickerson was the the just the the incredible feeling of ensemble that he created with the cast um, as a director. That's just a, a, a crucial skill and talent and. And uh, something that, that 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 I always remember with him, and and the the bonds that that he created in us have carried through my entire life. Uh, you know, people like like Chris and and, uh, and and Brian Coffey and Peter and and all these people that I've remained friends with to this day. You know, it's because of the the the, the relationships that he fostered in us and. Um, we've we've lost an amazing artist in this world when we lost him, and an amazing, wonderful man and human being. He is definitely going to be missed in this world. Uh, Richard Rassome was an incredibly creative and talented director that I had the opportunity to work with in Cripple Creek, Colorado. Uh, he was one of the first professional directors I got to work with. And I really appreciated his enthusiasm that he brought to the work, and I really am glad that I had the opportunity to work with him. The thing about Dick Rassome that I remember the best and that I appreciate the most is the fact that he made us better actors simply by believing that we were better than we thought we were. He set the bar for us. He was a generous man. He was a gentleman. He was very generous with his time and his energy during productions. But he really believed in us as artists, as craftsmen. And his belief in us as actors made us better actors. And I don't know that any of us who worked under him would have gone on and done some of the work that we have done if we had not had Dick Rousseau believing in us, if we not had the opportunity to work under him at the Imperial Players. I enjoyed performing in, in the shows Dick directed. Uh, I had a blast, and I am sad to think that he isn't with us, but he lives on in all of us who worked under him, and maybe that's his gift to, to us and to our audiences. All right. This is probably my 30th attempt to film this uh, due to not getting it right and also due to people hammering on the house next door. But here it goes. Uh, my first memory of Dick uh, is also one of my best, and it was going to see Dick and Cindy at their apartment in uh, Manhattan to audition for the melodrama for the first time. I had no idea where Cripple Creek was. I had no real idea what melodrama was, and so... When I got there and I was doing the scene from Flying Scud and I was watching the horse and I thought I was being as big as I needed to be, Dick went, no, bigger, bigger from the chest, come on! And I did it bigger, bigger than I thought uh, I should ever be doing it. And he went, that's it! And uh, he pushed me outside of my comfort zone. And that's what he did every day in rehearsal, was pushed you outside of your comfort zone into a place where melodrama could actually exist and actually be true. And uh, he taught me, he taught me uh, how important theater is and that theater is nothing if not infused with great joy. And that's how Dick lived his life, was with enthusiasm and great joy. And that's how I will always remember him. I'll miss you very much. Dick Rousseau.